it's going to record this and then we're going to hello 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 this is the workshop the um anxiety workshop the nutrition workshop where i'm going to be giving you lots of information that's going to be able to help you deal with your anxiety in a natural way and actually that's what we've been doing all week so we've been looking at a lot of lifestyle things a lot of things that you can do for self-care but today i want to talk about the nutrition with you so if you are joining me live if you're there in facebook or if you're watching this anywhere else afterwards give us a comment say hi let me know that you're here i love to interact with you um, sarah's in the comments now so she'll be interacting with you and I will go through all the comments afterwards. So really nice to see you all this morning. So this is day three of our Anxious to Aligned workshops and I'm really, really excited to talk to you about nutrition because I know how much it can actually help you. So food can help you heal your anxiety, it can help with um, other mental health conditions as well. And I've got lots of content that I want to go through with you this morning that's gonna be really helpful for you. I want to go through the various key nutrients that are going to help you manage your stress, your anxiety, perhaps panic attacks, depression, whatever mental health struggles that you might have at the moment. Um, I'm also going to be talking about what kind of foods that you want to avoid because that's just as important. So if you want to grab a notebook or maybe you use your phone to make notes if you're not watching on your phone now, I know that I learn best when I'm making notes and listening so I can reflect back on my own notes or just enjoy listening now and you can watch it back and make notes afterwards if you need to. So I've got a question for you before I jump right into this, which is, do you consider your food when it comes to your mental health? And um, do you eat for good brain health? And I ask this without judgment and anyone that's worked with me knows that I don't judge. I don't think I'd be a very good nutritionist if I was judging people. And I know that before I studied nutrition, it wasn't something that I'd considered. So um, I'm not expecting that you are focusing on it, but it's just interesting just to get a gauge of if there's people here who are considering that when it comes to their diet, or maybe you have no idea of how helpful it can be for you. So that is exciting because I'm going to tell you all about that now. So first of all, I just want to talk about um, anxiety and how this is like a normal emotion and we are not expected to be happy all of the time. OK, so just accept that anxiety is normal. And what actually um, anxiety does is when it's working in the right way, it actually helps us. So anxiety can help us detect threats, okay? And what it will do is it will produce adrenaline in, in the body. And the way that we will feel that is, Sarah's gone through some of these symptoms, but it, you may feel it in your tummies. You might have butterflies or even in an upset tummy. You might notice your heart rates go in. Um, and what it does is it helps us sense danger. So especially if we was, you know, if a car was speeding around the corner and about to knock into us, we, we want that adrenaline to be pumping so we can move out of the way quickly enough but sometimes that system can be a little bit too sensitive and it can kind of trigger when it's a false alarm so today I'm going to go through the foods that are going to help you calm down that nervous system so that's not happening for you and for those of you who are watching that have got children because I know lots of you here have got children and anxiety is so prevalent at the moment isn't it I mean I'm sure you've seen that amongst our younger generation you might be wondering how you can help them as well so what I want to say to you is you need to help yourself first. This is really important and something that I really like to, I guess, preach about. Um, but if your nervous system is calm and soothed, you can actually help your children regulate their own nervous system. So some, an example that I could um, liken this to is when you have a baby and you put it on your chest, do you remember you helped to regulate their breathing? Well, you can do it with your children's nervous system even when they're older and it's called co-regulating. Um, so what you need to do is you need to concentrate on yourself first so take this information for you first otherwise it's a lot more difficult for you to help anyone else and there's lots of reasons that um, can cause anxiety but what we have a lot of control over is our diet especially at the moment you know whilst we're on lockdown and we're not eating out and probably not having as many takeaways we've got lots and lots of control over our diet and even if you've got a genetic predisposition to any mental health conditions what you eat can make a significant difference to how you feel so this is really exciting Sarah said in, in an earlier video this week that you can become your own solution and I completely agree with that around the food so if you're not eating well then it affects what I normally talk about which is your energy in a massive way and it also affects your mental health so then you can't be bothered to cook you've got no energy you're not feeling great you can't be bothered to cook and it leaves you in this like poor cycle of low eating low energy anxiety depression give me a yes in the comments if you're like nodding your head you're like yeah totally get it this is something that you feel 
So I'm going to share with you the most important nutrients that you need to include so you can start making some small changes. And what I found is making small changes then leads on to bigger changes. So you need to be able to start somewhere. And if anyone's watching, I think I did see on my phone that Karen's here. Karen's done my 12 week course. So if anyone's here who's worked with me, if you've done my 12 week course or more recently, my three week course, please put in the comments your experience of how um, eating the right foods helped support your mental health, how it helps support your emotions as well, because this is really encouraging to others. If they know that it's a few simple steps, then they're going to be more likely to do it. And I want to help empower more people to take these steps. So let's um, show others how, how easy it can be and let's kind of support each other. And I don't know if you saw it, but there was a comment in the group this morning from Wendy, uh, Wendy Gotto, and she said, what is this sorcery? I've done the breath work, I've done 10 minutes yoga, I had a healthy breakfast, it's only 9.15, I walked uh, for three miles last night. And so yeah, these small changes to your diet and your lifestyle can make a really, really big difference to how you feel, your emotions and your mental health. So don't let overwhelm stop you. I'm gonna be going through a lot of information with you today, and you don't need to do it all, okay? You just need to start with one thing so by the end of this I want you to choose what one thing it is that you're going to do differently and that can be the start of your journey okay so you've probably heard now that there's been lots and lots of studies that have proven how uh, the gut and the mind are connected have you heard this I'm sure you have right it's been about for many many years and that's via the vagus nerve so the vagus nerve connects the gut and the mind so when you treat your gut uh, well then what you're actually doing is you're treating your mental health at the same time so that's where we've got to start okay and if you're eating a poor diet then that is going to lead to lots of anxiety symptoms so a poor diet leads to things like moodiness fatigue um, abnormal blood sugar levels and that can lead to um, anger hunger um, I'm just trying to remember that word now, hangry. Yeah, <laughs> that's the word that I used to use to describe myself a lot, hangry. So when you're hungry and angry, um, it can also lead to like nervousness and the jitters. And also when you're eating badly, obviously that can lead to weight gain as well. And when you gain weight, that affects your body image. It can knock your confidence. It leaves you, you know, doubting yourself as well. So it's kind of like this spiral downwards, which we want to get out of. And I want to help you like climb back up and you don't need to go from like zero to hero straight away. So let me just, uh, just say that again, that you only need to start by making one change. Okay. So um, these are the foods that you want to avoid or the foods that you want to minimize. Okay. And none of this is rocket science, but often we just need reminding. And quite often when I talk to my own mum about nutrition, she's like, I know that it's just, I just need reminding sometimes. So I'm very conscious of, I need reminding sometimes as well. So just take this as a a timely reminder and if you're here watching this or you're watching it on replay you're here for a reason and this is the information that you need to hear today okay so the research has shown that consuming foods that are high in sugar that are refined carbohydrates can give you these ups and downs with your blood sugar levels okay and what that does is it increases your anxiety as i said earlier it increases your nervousness your fatigue so we want to be staying away from them, those foods so to give you an example of what those foods are things like pastries cookies um, fizzy drinks and energy drinks. So I know a lot of people rely on energy drinks when they are struggling with their mental health because they feel like it gives them that boost. Um, fast foods, fried foods, processed meats, refined grains. And when I say refined grains, I'm talking about things like cereals, um, packaged breads, and all of these foods are high in omega-6. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about the difference between omega-3 and omega-6 and what a big difference that actually makes for your mental health. So what I'd like to know now is, would you cut back on some of these foods that I've mentioned if you knew that it would help you with your anxiety? So let me know in the comments now if you would. So if you would cut back on them because you knew it would help your anxiety, let me know in the comments now. So I would kind of want to know, are you on board? Is, is this helpful to you? So to reduce um, anxiety, we also need to talk about caffeine and alcohol. And I think, I feel like in my community, it's about, most people like caffeine, yeah. 
alcohol is like a 50 50 thing most people drink some and some people drink a bit too much my history definitely is drinking a bit too much i know that sarah shared in one of her videos earlier in the week that when she was suffering from social anxiety she used to rely on alcohol but the problem with caffeine and alcohol is it increases anxiety symptoms and i remember one of my clients that i worked with particularly she uh, she really enjoyed a drink but she'd always say the next day her anxiety was heightened so much um, so it can make those symptoms more difficult to get under control as well. So ideally, if you're really suffering with anxiety or any me mental health challenges, you really want to be avoiding alcohol. And if you can, caffeine completely. Um, if that's not realistic for you, then you need to put some limits in place. And so maybe say one to three alcoholic drinks a week and then no more than two at a time. OK, so it'd be a couple of times a week that you're having one or two drinks. So let me know if you feel like that's manageable for you or do you need more help around that? So the thing about caffeine and alcohol is they also contribute to more inflammation in the body. I know that if I have an alcoholic drink, quite often I'll notice that all of my gums are inflamed. So that's kind of showing me that it is increasing inflammation in my body. And depression is now classified by many as an inflammatory disorder. So what we want to be doing is concentrating on eating lots of anti-inflammatory foods. This is a natural remedy for anxiety and it really helps you to balance your mood and it helps you to balance your stress response as well. So it will put you back into that rest and digest mode. So we've spoken about that a few times this week. You've got the rest and digest mode and then you've got the fight flight um, and freeze response so that's the one we want to get out of we want to get out of the stress we want to get back into the rest and digest and this actually helps our digestion it helps us lose weight it helps us feel calmer it helps us get out of the stress response so it's good in so many ways so some of the foods that you want to be including are things like healthy fats so are you eating healthy fat fats things like avocados olive oil and salads is lovely um fatty fish are things like salmon and then unrefined carbohydrates. So if you're not really sure what unrefined carbohydrates are, not talking about um, a packet of um, crisps or chips here or um, packets of bread, but more like brown rice, quinoa, lentils, and also including lots of lean protein as well. So just to say at this point, if you have any questions, just pop it in the chat box and I will get round to answering your questions afterwards. Or if Sarah can answer them, she'll be answering them as we're going along. Now, there was one psychiatrist that actually ranked foods for their antidepressant properties. This is a really interesting study. So we looked at the density of each of the um, each of these foods and how many of these uh, essential brain nutrients they had in these foods. So I'm going to go through this list with you. So specifically, if you're suffering with um, depression or anxiety, these are the specific foods that are going to help you with that because they're highly nutrient dense. OK, so I'm going to start with the animal foods. And these are probably foods you're not eating that often, to be fair. Oysters, liver, poultry giblets, clams, mussels and crab. OK, they're not really the everyday foods, are they? But I'm thinking that a way that you could perhaps bring more of them into your diet are to have maybe like a crab pate or a smoked salmon pate. I know my husband really likes that. You could eat those with veggie sit sticks. Um, you might enjoy mussels. You just might not get around to eating them very often. So maybe you could have like a, um, a mussels night at home or even if you go out, you could choose to eat them on, uh, off the menu. And I know in, uh, in my local supermarket, they do have flake crab. So I often buy that and have that in a salad. So that's some of the easy ways that you could include those foods. And the plant-based foods, again, some of them are a little bit more unusual, but the ones that you've probably tried before are watercress and spinach. These are amazing for depression and anxiety. And can you choose that you're going to go to the supermarket this week and you're going to pick up a, a bag of watercress or a bag of spinach? Um, and easy ways that you can include that in your diet this week is obviously a salad. So that could be the base of your salad or um, I'm a big fan of smoothies and juices. I've spoken to them about them lots of times, but watercress and spinach are really easy to add to both a smoothie or a juice. Fresh herbs are also there on the list of top contenders and that, that's really easy to add to any dish. So salads, yes, but also if you're having like a curry, a chili, anything like that, just sprinkling it with herbs just to finish off the dish. And then some of the more unusual ones, if you're willing to give that a go, are mustard greens, beet greens um, and Swiss chard. And Swiss chard is actually uh, quite a bitter food and that's really good for the liver as well. So that helps uh, detoxification. 
So like I say, can you pick one of those foods and include them in your shop this week? So is it the crab? Is it the mussels, the oysters? Or are you going to try maybe the spinach or the watercress? Let me know now what one you think that you can include. Okay, so now I want to go through like the six main nutrients that are going to help you manage stress, anxiety, panic attacks, depression. Okay, so let's go through the list. And um, those of you that have worked with me before are going to be very, very familiar with these. So just be a refresher for you. But the first one is omega free fatty acids. And you've probably heard this is brain food. So we're told to give it to our children to help them concentrate in class. And actually, on that point, I've really found that these uh, omega 3s help children that are suffering with AD. ADHD, ADD, autism, or not just children, adults as well. So what these omega-3 fatty acids do is they reduce inflammation in the body. And when you reduce inflammation, you get yourself out of pain. It helps with anxiety. It helps with depression. And the kind of foods that you can find these in are the oily fish, so sardines, uh, mackerel, salmon, probably something that you eat, but maybe not often enough. If you don't like those kind of... Um, those fishy fish, I'm going to say, then there are some nuts and seeds that you can get omega-3s from. They're actually quite difficult to get in, in foods. So the foods that you would want to be concentrating on the plant-based sources would be walnuts. They're really good. And if you look at a walnut, it's kind of the shape of a brain, right? So it's given us a, a clue that it's good for our brain health. And also flax seeds, chia seeds, hemp is really good, and then algae and seaweed. So particularly if you're uh, eating plant-based, if you're not eating fish, try and eat algae and seaweeds. Um, some of the easy ways to do that with seaweeds are they're really nice on top of a stir fry, on top of a salad. Um, you get the nori sheets that you get around sushi, and also algae, so things like spirulina, chlorella that you can put into juices. These are all amazing for brain health. So not only is it good for the brain, uh, it reduces inflammation, but it actually helps your focus, your memory, your concentration, your brain fog. And I see this, it's really obvious when I meet people, when I'm working with them, whether they're getting enough omega-3s or not. If they feel like they can't concentrate, they have no memory, I know that they're low on omega-3. So just have a reflect on yourself. Do you feel like you have information? Do you feel like you're struggling with your focus, your concentration? And this is something that you need to focus on. So to give you an idea of how much we need, in the UK, we need more than hot countries. So we need about double the amount of omega-3 than we need to omega-6. And that's because of our colder and darker climate. And signs of being low on omega-3 are things like dry skin, weight gain, and a sluggish, sluggish energy, and also that inflammation that I've been talking about. So I will notice this more in the winter for myself than I will in the summer. In the summer, you know, you haven't really got as much dry skin. So it's just showing us that while we've got the heat and the light, we don't need as many omega-3. So you will need to concentrate more on this during the winter. And basically, you're going to need them on a daily basis, especially if you know now that you're deficient in them. And what they're also going to help you do is regulate your hormones. And I think everyone who's been through my 12 week program who's looking to regulate their hormones. When they look at the signs of deficiencies, they realize that they're all deficient. And if you are deficient in omega 3s, then you're going to go for false hormone producers. So that are things like alcohol, chocolate, drugs, and that ends up putting you in this addictive cycle. And then you start being down on yourself and you feel like you've got no willpower but actually that's not what it's about at all it's about that you need to balance the body you need more of these omega-3s so let me know in the comments now do you feel like you need more omega-3s and what are you going to do to include more of these omega-3s in your diet so i just want to give you a kind of a little roundup of omega-6 omega-6 we also need but in the western diet we get about 20 times the amount of omega-6 then we do omega-3 when we're not focusing on it. And we actually want double the amount of omega-3 than 6. So omega-6 is in things like meat and dairy, which most people eat quite a lot of. So it's in um, butter as well. It's in eggs unless they say otherwise. So you can actually get omega-3 rich eggs. You need to look at the packet when you're going to the supermarket or your farmer's market or wherever you shop. Look at the packet. If it doesn't say, they're actually higher in omega-6 and 3. Um, and it's in things like... Um, sunflower oil which is used for cooking a lot of things it's in mayonnaise it's in salad dressings so like i say it's very easy to get a lot of omega-6 and actually we need to focus on the omega-3s because that's what's really going to help us with uh, the anxiety the depression the mental health so let me know if you're following this if it's making sense if this information is useful to you so that's one of the six that i want to go through so let's move on to number two now
So talking about magnesium and magnesium is one of the leading deficiencies that we see in adults. And if you're struggling with anxiety, it's likely that you need to try taking some magnesium. And I'm going to go through the food sources with you and also talk about supplements as well. So magnesium helps you to relax your muscles. It helps you to calm down the nervous system. It helps um, the function of an amino acid called GABA. Okay, And GABA helps us to regulate certain hormones that are crucial for calming down the brain and actually promoted, promoting relaxation. Magnesium is commonly used to combat anxiety, poor digestion, um, muscle spasms, trouble sleeping. And it can also be useful to take at night. So magnesium can actually be taken at any time. If you take it in the morning, the effects are going to last all day. I actually find some people need to take it in the morning and at midday to keep that effect lasting all day. But it's also one that's useful to take at night. So not all supplements you should take at night, but magnesium, because it helps you sleep, is actually really good to use at night. And um, orally isn't the only way that you can take magnesium. So you could use a body spray, so a magnesium body spray. And actually, when we get magnesium through the skin, which is called transdermal, um, it's actually absorbed really efficiently into the body. So especially if you're suffering with IBS or any problems with your gut, it's really good to go through the skin um, as well as orally. So another way of doing that is by putting some Epsom salts into your bath. And you probably use that, or maybe you heard that your parents or grandparents use Epsom salts in their bath for like tired and achy muscles. Um, that's another thing that I use for myself regularly and particularly for my children. If I feel like they can't sleep, they just have an, an Epsom salt bath before bedtime and it really helps them. So some of the foods that will help that are high in magnesium are green leafy vegetables. So make sure that you're eating green leafy vegetables every single day. Um, it's also in nuts, they are in seeds, they're in legumes. And some of the best sources are pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, which I find really easy to include to evening meals. Uh, so like if you're doing a stir fry or something like that, like my children love sesame seeds over the top, over the top. I do as well. I toast them slightly for a little bit more flavour. Um, Brazil nuts and thankfully cacao, so chocolate, is really high in magnesium, which is why a lot of women crave it around their time of the month because the magnesium actually helps the uh, menstrual cramps. So you will still get um, magnesium through commercial chocolate, uh, which is great, but commercial chocolate isn't great for our health or our mental health because it's got fats in there that have been heated to a high temperature, so hydrogenated fats, and they're not great for the body. They're quite hard for the body to break down. So you could go for a raw chocolate, my favourite raw chocolate is Ombar. You can get that in most supermarkets or health food shops. Um, or just raw cacao powder, which I tend to add to lots of smoothies, lots of my breakfasts. And I remember one of my friends, when she was pregnant, she said, I can feel the difference between the day that I have cacao and I don't have cacao. Like She was getting a lot more cramps in her body on the days that she wasn't having cacao. So it really is quite powerful and quite a delicious way to add magnesium into your diet. So if you're looking to take it orally, there's lots of different types of magnesium that you can take. I like one called citrate. It's actually a really affordable um, form of magnesium. But the only thing is it can give you diarrhea. So if you do get loose bowels um, or tummy aches a lot, citrate may not suit you. The way to find out is to try it and you start at a low dose and then you start working up. But if uh, magnesium citrate doesn't work for you, then uh, magnesium glycinate would be really good for you. That's uh, very easily absorbable and digestible. Uh, it's just a little bit more expensive. So one of those two options would be really good. But don't forget um, the sprays or the bath salts as well. They're also really good ways to get magnesium. Okay, moving onwards, I want to talk to you about B vitamins now. So B vitamins play a crucial role in producing brain chemicals and they help combat stress and they help to stabilise your mood. Now, when I was feeling very stressed and very overwhelmed, I didn't use the word anxiety at the time, I used stress and overwhelm. B vitamins really helped me to balance my hormones again. So the particular one that helps with anxiety is vitamin B6. So there's a range of B vitamins. You want to be getting the range, but if you're struggling with anxiety, it's B6 particularly that's going to help you because this will boost your mood. It balances your blood sugar levels and it helps maintain a healthy nervous system. 
And if you're low on B6, then you're going to feel things like anxiety, irritability, depression, um, muscles pains, fatigue. So first of all, you could concentrate on um, adding more foods in that have the B6 in them. When you're feeling stressed, you actually get through the B6 a lot quicker in your body. So you actually need more of it. So the kind of foods that are high in B6 are turkey, um, beef, go, you're going to go um, grass fed if you can afford to do that. And then if you want plant based, pistachios are really good, um, avocado is really good and sunflower seeds are really good. So they're foods that are high in B6. Um, another B vitamin that's important to talk about is vitamin B12. And this is really important for lots of things, but it helps concentration. It helps um, your nervous system function. It helps fight chronic stress. So a lot of people are low on B12. I like to take the spray supplement of B12, which is from a company called Better You. But natural sources through food are, um, sardines are quite high, beef liver is high, mackerel is high, um, salmon is high as long as you're getting like wild salmon. And one of my favorite plant-based forms of uh, B12 is called nutritional yeast. So some uh, vegans call it noosh, I think. And it's kind of got, it looks like fish food, so it's like flakes, and it's got kind of a cheesy flavour. So if you're comparing it like directly to cheese, it doesn't taste like cheese, but it does add a cheesy flavour to food. So it's really nice. Actually, I like it. If I have the crab salad with avocado, I put the nutritional yeast over the top. So it's something that would just stay uh, in the cupboard. You know, it's got a long shelf life and it gives you lots and lots of B12. Other good forms are eggs, cottage cheese, feta cheese. And um, although we're concentrating here on talking about B6 and B12, you do want to make sure that you're getting the range of B vitamins. So general foods that have got B vitamins in them are seeds and nuts like sunflowers and almonds and dark green leafy vegetables. And it's worth saying here that both magnesium and B vitamins work really well together. They need each other to help absorb. And you're seeing now that a lot of the foods that I'm talking about are gonna cover lots of categories. So you've not got to think, what do I need for omega-3? What do I need for magnesium? What do I need for B6? A lot of the foods are covering all of these and they're just whole foods. So steering clear of the processed foods, you know, the fried foods, the takeaway foods and adding more whole foods into your diet. Okay, so I want to move on now to talk to you about zinc and zinc is really important for brain health. So it's the second most abundant trace mineral in the body. It's present in all of your tissues and it's got lots of functions like lots of the vitamins and minerals, but it helps you um, absorb B vitamins. So it's important for that. Um, and also it plays like a crucial role in the immune system. So you may have seen like vitamin C and it's sold with zinc sometimes. So it's really important for immune health. And if you're low on um, zinc, which many people with mental health challenges are low on zinc, then you're going to feel you know, the impact of depression um, and anxiety as well. So what happens is your chemical messengers are not passing around your body as smoothly as they want to be. So some of the natural sources of zinc are um, whole grains, um, things like chicken and eggs, legumes, so we're talking like lentils, beans and nuts again, nutritional yeast again, so some of the foods I've already mentioned, um, squash seeds are really high in zinc as well. We well, know that I give my son pumpkin seed, so men are actually quite often low in zinc, so make sure that they eat some pumpkin seeds, that's really good for them. And yeah, like I say, you, look, there's a trend with these foods, right? I mentioned the same foods for all these categories. So are you including some nuts and seeds into your diet every day? And it's just like a small handful. So just in the palm of your hand, are you eating legumes? Are you like lentils, beans? Now it's also worth saying here, if you do struggle with IBS or any digestive problems, if you're not eating a lot of those foods at the moment, you're not going to be able to include lots of them in one go. You're going to have to include uh, start very gently a bit like the magnesium and then start building it up over the coming weeks. Okay, two more things to talk about is, uh, this is for gut health specifically. So probiotics, I'm sure you've heard a lot about probiotics and specifically if you have taken lots of antibiotics, 
then you need to make sure that you're taking a good probiotic. Also, if you've got IBS, if you've got any digestive problems, include a good quality probiotic. And what this does is it um, repopulates the gut with good bacteria. So you, we've got this balance of good and bad bacteria. Your bad bacteria may be growing out of control and we want to put the good bacteria back in there. So that's one way of doing it with probiotics. And the other way is through fermented foods. Now, if you haven't tried them already, or you may have tried, tried a bad version of them, don't rule them out because you can get, like most foods, you can get like really delicious versions of them. So I'm talking about things here like sauerkraut, kimchi, yogurt, kombucha, kefir. Have you heard of these foods? Do you know what I'm talking about? If you don't, um, I interviewed Fed who actually brews kombucha and we've done an interview here in this group. So go back and watch that for all of those foods are going to help you. Okay, the last one that I want to talk about is fibre, and fibre does a few things for us. So one thing that it helps us do is keep us regular, so it keeps the bowels moving. That's really important for the detoxification process. But also fibre is a source of prebiotics, so it actually feeds that good bacteria that's in the gut. Um, it helps to stabilise our blood sugar levels. And so this is going to be helping with inflammation, and it's going to help with anxiety and depression. So some natural sources of fibre. I love chicory root and this is a really good alternative to coffee so try a chicory coffee um, also onions garlics leeks asparagus banana there's like lots and lots of food that are um, good forms of prebiotic for the gut and when you're thinking about fiber i don't want you to think like if you google fiber what actually comes up is um, whole grain food so it talks about cereals pasta bread oats i don't want you to be concentrated on those i want you to be concentrated on some of the other foods that i've been speaking about today so what i've found with those foods is yes they do have fiber but they're also very dehydrating and they actually don't help with um with going to the toilet <laughs> they don't they actually dry the body out. So be concentrating on things like um, dark green leafy vegetables, which I mentioned earlier, things like carrots, beetroot, broccoli, spinach, the legumes that I mentioned, just be careful with the IBS. Um, so generally, the darker the colour of the vegetable, the more fibre it's got in it. So I've gone through a lot of information there with you. Let me know if this is helpful, being helpful to you. Let me know what one thing you will definitely try not in the future, not next week, this week. What one thing will you try this week? And before I go, I want to leave you with some help, helpful resources. So one thing I've started to work on this week is a menu plan for you. So I want to write a seven day menu plan with breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, that are gonna help you with anxiety, help you with your mental health. So I want, it does take time for me to do that, okay? Because I want to include things like, um, I want to make it tasty, I want to make it healthy, I want to make it affordable. I want to make sure that you're not cooking nonstop. So I like to make sure that meals roll over to other days. So let me know if that's helpful for you. If I'm putting the time into creating it, I wanna make sure that it's the right resource for you. And so drop me, a, put in the um, comments now, menu plan, if that sounds helpful, if you feel like you would actually use it. And if you do want that, then I'll create it by the end of the week and then I will tell you um, how you can get hold of it. But some of the resources that I've already got ready for you, I put in this live, um, I created a gut health training. So if you feel like you're struggling with your gut health, get to the gut health training. It's completely free. Um, you go to the unit section in this group and you find the gut health post and then you comment on it. I've also tagged it to the very top of this page um, just this morning. So you should be able to find that. So go over there, comment gut health, and then I will send you that gut health training via messenger. I've also put here in the live um, some links to some blogs that I've written. So one's got my favourite breakfast recipe in that will help you with your mental health. Um, and the other one is a blog which is about the, the gut brain connection. So lots of resources there for you. I hope that's really helpful. I look forward to reading all of your comments. And like I said, if you've got any questions, post that now and I will help you with them too. Nice to see you.